Pharisees were coming up against him and he, he stood firm. He said, y'all ain't going to get me to change my story. My story is I was born blind. I was born blind. But a man called Jesus came by and, 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 and put a poultice on my eyes and now I am seen. Now whatever you want to do, whatever you want to say, I will continue to say that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Step into being a young grown person. To allow the teachings of Jesus Christ to be the place where you get your information about reality. If you're going to keep it real, keep it real in light of the word of God. God says in his word that I am above. My thoughts are above your thoughts. My ways are beyond your ways. This is what God says. God says I am not only imminently with you, but let's keep it real. I am transcendently beyond you. Babylon with Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Now, Nebuchadnezzar was a bad dude that he was nobody to play with. And when he put an image in Babylon, in the plain of Dura, everybody had to bow. But on, not only bow out of, their, uh, 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 out of their will, but bow out of fear. But there was three little Hebrew dudes who stood up in the plain and said, Oh, king, we are not careful to answer you concerning this matter. Let me tell you something. When you know God like that, let the trouble come. Let the trials rise. And let the heat come on. Because I'll have the victory to stand in any situation and declare that my God will make a way out of no way.
together once again, Lord God, and we thank you for those that have gathered this day in this building. Lord God, uh, we just want to give you all that you deserve. We know that uh, the only begotten Son, he made a way for us, Lord God, and he bore our sins. He didn't have to do it, but he did, and he endured the cross for a mighty long time. And because, Lord God, of that, Lord God, we are indebted. We are indebted, Lord God, and responsible to all the great things that you have done for us. Some things, Lord God, we're not aware of, but for a foreigner, Lord God, you've read our minds and you know what's best for us. You've led us and you've fed us, Lord God, and you've protected us a mighty long way. We pray, Lord God, that you help us to increase our faith, that we, Lord God, will continue to believe and trust in you no matter what takes place, Lord God, in the, this generation that we're going through. There's a lot of things that's happening, Lord God, that sometimes become frustrating and weary, and sometimes we may lose our way, Lord God. We pray that you help us to keep focused on you. 
you, Lord God, the things that would make us, Lord God, stronger in your word and your might and your power. Lord God, we lift you up because you're worthy of all things, and we ask you to forgive us of our sins. Give us a clean heart, a right frame of mind, Lord God, to be obedient to your word. We thank you, Lord God, for the comforter that's always there to pick us up, to lead us and to guide us along our way, Lord God. We should stumble and pray that you would pick us up, Lord God, and point us in the direction that you would have us to go. Help us to keep our eye on the reward that you have in store for those who diligently, Lord God, maintain their faith and trust in you. Lord God, we love you, we praise you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. With thanksgiving, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I, again, uh, let me just call uh, uh, your attention to the announcement uh, that is in the that the announcements that are in the bulletin. Okay, uh, today is uh, bike ride fellowship in the park, and uh, I, I hope that uh, you. In fact, Reverend, they don't even need to go home and eat, right? No, sir. <laughs> hey, amen. Amen. Uh, and the address is there. Uh, you can Google it or see Pastor Williams for more uh, detailed uh, information. Uh, prayer month uh, is coming to a close, but we encourage you, as Brother Bob did during the prayer time, to continue your commitment to meet at 2 o'clock as uh, time uh, permits. Uh, next uh, week, uh, our men will be meeting on Saturday morning. And uh, coming for breakfast at 8.30, and then coming here in the sanctuary to rehearse uh, for, um, uh, for music on Sunday. Now, next Sunday, which is uh, August the 28th, yeah. right, is a special Sunday mm -hmm. here at uh, Southside Baptist Church. Ladies, did you get your hats? I hope you have. <clears throat> Uh, so we're uh, asking you if you can and if you would like to to wear a hat now we had some discussion uh, we're doing it again uh, and I'm talking to the camera now because some might be listening who will not be here amen uh, so we want you to be a part of it as well uh, if you would like to uh, take a picture of your pretty self in your gorgeous hat, <laughs> send it to our email. And uh, the Reverend uh, um, Martin, who has who runs this thing, ha has some special plans for that. Yes, Amen. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, uh, feel free to do that if you can. And our email address is Southside Baptist Church at Verizon.net. Let me repeat that again: Southside Baptist Church at verizon.net and i think reverend williams 
has another announcement that he needs to make. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, good morning. Good morning, sir. Amen. Let me say uh, today uh, is, is a, a high day. Today marks 51 years. Yay! Amen. 51 years. That's a long time, Reverend. Amen. <laughs> Pastor and uh, Sister Terry Downs have been uh, in holy matrimony. So this is their 51st anniversary yes, today. Sir. And we thank God for that. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Of course, some of you know today is my birthday. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but but there's, there's another anniversary that's just up the street, if the Lord tarries. Yeah. And that's why I'm here. Um, it is rare. I've had the opportunity to serve with Southern Baptists now for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And the Southern Baptist Convention, which is still right. the largest Protestant denomination in North America, is still that. Um, they do statistical surveys to see how long pastors average in terms of their tenure in churches. Come on, bro. And the yeah. average pastor in Protestant congregations, that is Baptist, Methodist, uh, Lutheran, Episcopalian, you just go across the whole spectrum. The average tenure is three and a half to four years. Yeah, yeah. The average pastor stays three and a half to four years in a given congregation and then either quits or moves on. Mm -hmm. Our pastor, if the Lord tarries, the second Sunday of September 2022, will have served the Southside Baptist Church for 48 years. Did you hear what I said? Yeah. <laughs> the average pastor serves four years. <laughs> And our pastor has served 12 times the distance of the average pastor. Wow. And we want to celebrate that. Lord is good. And we want to invite the congregation to uh, join in. We're going to lift whatever it is that God puts on your heart as a special offering to share with our pastor as a part of celebrating with him, affirming him, and encouraging him when the second Sunday in September comes. Amen? Amen. 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 Pastor, we want you to know. Go for the goal. Yeah. That's right. You got his back. Right? You right. Go for the goal. Go for the goal. You all do know what the goal is, right? Yeah. Some, of, some of you have lived to see 50 years. Yeah. 50 is the golden celebration. Yeah. Amen. 48 is on the way. Yeah. Amen to 50. But we certainly want to celebrate with our pastor 48 years. And uh, you'll get some instructions from our trustees and our deacons as they come in subsequent Sundays to make us aware of how we can uh, join in that. But I wanted to hurry up on my birthday yeah. and say that we need to, to make a special <laughs> gift to our pastor on the day that he celebrates 48 years. Does the church say amen? Amen. It's interesting. Sometimes some folk ask me, how long have you been the pastor? My response is usually too long. <laughs> but God is good. God is good. Yeah. All right. You know what we're going to do now, aren't you? Yes, sir. We're going to take an offering. Not for the pastor, but for the ministry. <laughs> um, and uh, I would encourage those of you who are joining us by uh, uh, electronics, uh, if you like what you see, uh, if you want to be a part of this, feel free uh, to uh, make an offering. Um, I was just, Reverend, I was just consulted. Um, the question is, are we ever going to see this place full again? Uh, and if the folks are saying no, uh, but God is able. Yes, Amen? Yes. God is able. Amen. And if you do your part and I do my part, we'll see it come to pass. Amen. Let's pray. Father. We thank you for the faithfulness of your people. We thank you for their gathering Sunday after Sunday. And now as we come to bring an offering unto you, O oh Lord, may it come from the depth of our hearts and may it rise into your presence like sweet-smelling savor. Lord, take these, the offerings of your people.
do with them only what you can because we love you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't know what it's going to be like, but I'm looking forward to it. Let's stand as we sing together. Here we go. Sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy.
I will do a thing in Israel at the which both the ears of everyone that hear it shall tingle. Uh, in that day I will perform against Eli all the things which I have spoken concerning his house when I began I would also make an end for I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because his sons made themselves vile and he restrained them not and therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor uh, with offerings forever. May God bless our hearts <coughs> the reading of his word. Uh, you all know, is it not connecting, Reverend? Okay, uh, all right. You all know that I uh, very seldom uh, give you a subject to hold on to. <clears throat> I thought about several, and one of them uh, went something like this. Is there a Samuel in the house? Right. Is there a Samuel in the house? Now, uh, Samuel really was uh, what we refer to as a Levi, um, a very young man. Uh, according to 1, 2, and 3, Samuel was providing a service to the Lord under the tutelage of uh, Brother Eli, who was the priest. Now, let me just stop here. And one of the things that I started to do, Reverend, is to just kind of, uh, you know, preach as I go along. But I couldn't help myself. I had to come back to the practical application, you see. Uh, so when we get there, I'll just give you the outline and we'll be on our way home. But I must stop here to comment about this. You see, uh, Samuel was actually uh, providing service to the Lord uh, under the tutelage of Eli the priest. Now we really need to understand that when we come to talk about the church, and I'm not talking about necessarily the local church, I am talking about the church of Jesus Christ. Remember what he says, the gates of hell will bang against it, but what? Uh, it will not fall. So we need to understand that uh, when we come to worship, we not come to worship the pastor. We don't come to worship the church. Uh, we don't come to, to worship the deacon. We don't come to worship the denomination. When we worship the Lord through our giving, we don't give to the church. We don't give to the deacons. We don't give to the denomination. We don't give to the pastor. But we are saying, thank you, Lord that you have provided for us so that we can make a love offering unto you. So uh, that's very important, that he was ministering to the Lord. When you do service, you don't do service for the church. You do service for the Lord. And, and it makes a difference when you understand that uh, context. Uh, what's this now? What you need to understand that uh, the, the, the priestly family, uh, particular, particularly Eli, he was one of the most powerful uh, families in Israel at that time. Watch this. Uh, in his day, uh, prophetic revelation and divine word was very rare. This is the one time that the King James Version get it right, got it right. It says the word of God was precious in those days because that's the literal uh, uh, translation. Now watch this. You may ask the question why? Uh, simply because uh, the, 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 the circumstance and situation seem to have been linked to God's displeasure with the people. Yeah. 
Now, when you go home, I need you to check uh, chapter 14 of 1 Samuel and chapter 28 of 1 Samuel. Uh, in those two chapters, we will find a fellow by the name of Saul. You remember Saul? He was the king. But what Saul decided to, to do, uh, he decided that he'd take matters into his own hand. And then he goes to God and says, God, I need to have a word from you. God said, I ain't got no word for you because uh, you went out on your own. So this seemed to uh, 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 have, uh, have an effect. The, the, the people's uh, uh, rebelliousness against God. Um, it also helps to explain why society was so degenerate at that time. Uh, listen to what Proverbs says. Proverbs 29 and 8 says, Where there is no vision, the people uh, perish. Uh, but, 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 but he who keeps the law of God, he is happy therein. Now, in, in Amos chapter 8, here's what God said. The days will come, said the Lord God, uh, that I will send a famine in the land. Lord have mercy. He says, not a famine of bread, nor of, uh, of water, uh, but a famine of hearing the word of God. So it seems uh, as if under Eli's leadership, the, uh, uh, the, the, the situation was right. Uh, because folk were doing their own thing. Uh, they have rebelled against um, uh, the word of God and, and, and everything. Now, uh, it goes on in, in verse 2. Uh, it, it contains the symbolism. Watch this now. And it came to pass that, that, uh, that when Eli was laid down in his place, his eyes began to watch them that he uh, could not uh, see. Eli, Eli, Eli's eyes, and by extension, watch this now, by extension, his spiritual insight uh, into things was so weak uh, that he could barely see. Uh, and you, you know, when, 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 when you come to the time uh, where... where where, where you are so preoccupied with, with other things, uh, you have a difficult time uh, uh, discerning uh, spirituality before you. Uh, it goes on to say, watch this now. Uh, it, it, listen to what it says in verse 3. Ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord. Uh, this was, uh, as somebody said, uh, 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 toward the dawn, the lamp of God, it was still burning in Shiloh's, uh, despite the darkness of uh, Shiloh's hour. Um, uh, it, it, uh, then it, it, it went on to say, uh, those verses in between there tells about uh, Samuel fall. Uh, going to bed and the Lord trying to speak to him. Uh, you can read it uh, in verses, what is it, um, 4 uh, through verse 10. Uh, Samuel kept on getting up and going to Eli and saying to Eli, you call me. Eli said, nope, didn't call you. Uh, go back and go to bed, young man. You're just hearing things. And, and, and the third time, uh, Eli uh, discerned that maybe God is trying to get his attention and, and gave him instruction as to how to respond uh, to that. Um, but in the darkness of uh, Shiloh's hour, uh, the lamp of God still burning in the temple. Yeah. Somebody says uh, it, 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 it was symbolic that Samuel should go to sleep in the temple of God where the Ark of the Covenant was yeah. that represented the presence of God. Right. Yeah. How, how God put all of this uh, together. Uh, this young man 
uh, not only uh, was positioned spatially, but he was also positioned spiritually. Uh, somebody says that he was the, 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 the uh, only Israelite that was actually closest uh, to the Lord. Now, verses 11 through 14, kind of a, uh, <laughs> oh, I, I didn't want to say it, but, but, but you know, you've got to say it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes there are some things in life that need to be said, even though it, 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 it can create some tension, it can create some anxiety, it can create some fear, it can do a whole lot of stuff. Now, 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 now watch this. Uh, God gave to, uh, to uh, Samuel uh, what we call a terrifying revelation. Yeah, yeah. This revelation was a repetition of something God had already said. Yeah. <laughs> But what it was, it was judgment against the house of Eli. Usually, usually, Brother Charlie, the, the judgment of God comes with what, what we call a condition. And the condition is, if you don't do this, this will happen. But if you do this, I will bless you. I will forgive and bless. But apparently, Levi's situation was so evil and demoralizing that what God said it's, it's all over, Eli, for you and your uh, family. He said, every promise, outcome from beginning to end, according to uh, verse 12, would become a reality in Eli's family life. Ah, uh, ah, uh, but again, <clears throat> He, he, got, he continues to do, he said, now, Eli, you are going to bear the blunt of my judgment. Why? Because you knew what was going on in your house and you did nothing about it. Now, now, now let, let, I can't help myself here again. I can't help myself. What we need to understand is that ah. Uh, before the covenant relationship, um, every uh, head of household was the priest of that family. Yeah. Not now. I know that modern day society would have a lot of issue with that because the priests actually represent the family in spiritual things. Yeah. And, and I don't care how old that son or daughter got, uh, daddy, the head of that family, was not only the priest, but he was, uh, he was the authority by virtue of the fact that he, got, he was the priest. Now, the promise was that Israel would become a nation of priests. A nation of priests. However, because of their rebellion, uh, they, 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 you know, they lost that blessing. But I'm so glad that one day at, um, uh, at Calvary, mm -hmm. the temple veil, hallelujah, yeah, yeah. was rent from top to bottom. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now you know what that, before you get happy, <laughs> before you get happy, that transfer the responsibility from Eli to you. Yeah, yeah. Because what, what now is that you are, we are, individual priests unto God. Uh, male and female. 
Uh, let, 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 let me see. Let, let me pick on Reverend Martin over here. Uh, 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 brother, let me tell you. Uh, Sister Martin might follow your instructions yeah. and advice and whatever. But where it comes in terms of her relationship uh, to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know what? She is personally responsible to God. The same way that you are personally yeah. responsible to God. Yeah. So, so don't go away from here and say. The, the, the reverend said that my husband or my father or my older brother is supposed to be my priest. No, you are your priest yourself yeah. Yeah. unto God. All right, let's 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 understand that. Uh, God uh, further said to 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 Samuel, what you need to do is you need to tell Eli that this thing has gotten so bad and so rotten that it cannot be atoned for by sacrifices or prayers. Lord have mercy. And you say, preacher, why you got to be so down about the whole thing? Well, let me suggest to you uh, three things very quickly. Israel was in a very dark place at this point in her history. And it came about simply because folk would not do what they were supposed to do. Yeah. Understanding. Beginning with the king. You know, Saul decided he's going to take stuff into his own hands. Uh, uh, he didn't need God uh, to, 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 to go make sacrifices. He was king, not the priest. But, but, but he began to mess with some stuff that he should not have been messing with. Uh, Eli was the priest. He, he was in the temple doing his own thing and, and just... Totally oblivious to everything that's going on. Look, look at what look at what verse 14 says. It says, uh, I sworn on to his house that the iniquity of Eli's house uh, will be per will not be purged with sacrifice uh, nor with offering. Why? Because Eli knew what was going on and did not do anything about it. Now let me stop preaching and start meddling. Consider our present situation. And I'm not going to, this morning, what we call, I'm not going to call out nobody. I'm just going to read some scriptures. And let you deal with it for yourself. Matthew chapter 24. Beginning at verse 4. Here's what it says. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, yeah. I am the Christ, yeah. and shall deceive many. Uh, you shall hear of wars, mm. rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, uh, for all of these things must uh, come to pass, but the end is not yet. Listen to what he says. Nation shall rise against nation. Kingdoms against kingdoms. There shall be famine, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. Uh, is, it, uh, is, it, is it clear? Uh, first, uh, uh, Second Timothy. Uh, Second Timothy. Chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And here is what that says. It says, this I want you to know also, that in the last day uh, uh, perilous times shall come. Why? For men 
shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemer, disobedient to parents, and thankful, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, uh, incontinent, uh, fierce, despisers uh, of, of, of those that are good, traitors, uh, heady, high-minders, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, uh, uh, such uh, you ought to turn away. And then in First Timothy uh, chapter uh, uh, chapter four, um, uh, verses one, two, and three. Here's what it says. Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith giving uh, heed to seducing spirits and a uh, doctrine of devils and uh, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot, hot, hot iron, uh, forbidding uh, to marry and uh, to obtain from, from meats uh, which God has created uh, uh, to be received with thankfulness of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is to if it is to be uh, received with thanksgiving. Now, do do I do I need to go in to explain that to you? Have you listened to the news recently? Uh, one nation is threatening the other nation. One nation is invading that nation. Uh, you know, it's it's crazy. Listen, listen to folk. Folk are gone. Folk are gone crazy about themselves, loving themselves more than they love the truth, and and and, and just trying to figure out a whole lot of stuff. I was listening to the uh, to to the uh, to the news. Several years ago, we abandoned prayer from the schools. Uh huh. This year, a school board in Texas has removed every version of the Bible uh, from their library and from anywhere in school. This is supposed to be a Christian nation, a nation after God. Listen, the late Dr. Robert G. Lee says, when, when folk in high places slip and slide, Morally and spiritually, the nation slips and slides morally and spiritually. We're in a dark place. But let me, let me also suggest that because of being in a dark place, Believers in Jesus Christ need to wake up spiritually. Why? Because God will judge sin. Yeah. Is that what he said? Now, I have a note here. Uh, when God's judgment comes, guess what? Everybody who deserves his judgment will be included. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to do it anyhow. See, sometimes what we do, if we have enough money, we can circumvent the law. If we have enough power, we can circumvent the law. If we know the right people, we can circumvent the law. Yeah. For, for us, there is always a loophole. Mm -hmm. And watch this now. When there is not a loophole, we can do plea bargaining. Mm -hmm. Can I just tell you about my experience several years ago? I got a ticket. And somebody recommended that uh, I, 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 I get an attorney because this ticket uh, carried with it uh, significant uh, penalties. And, 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 and uh, 
uh, go to the court system and plea bargain it. And then somebody else suggested that, well, you really don't have to get an attorney because this is uh, common practice. Go in early, see the prosecuting attorney, explain to him your case and ask him to bring down the weight of the ticket so you don't have to uh, do any points and, and, and all that good stuff. So I did. And sure enough, guess what? The attorney, the prosecuting attorney said, uh, uh, give me a minute. Uh, uh, he went in the back somewhere. I know what he did. He checked my driving records. Yeah. Are, you under, are you with me? Yeah. I, 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 and he came I, I, and he said, we will do this instead of this. Yeah. Let, let me tell you, brothers and sisters, let, let, let me tell you this. When you violate the principles and the commandments of God. The only prosecuting attorney that God will hear is his son Jesus Christ. And the only thing that will matter when you get there will be the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're not covered Saved, sealed, onto the day of redemption. God's judgment is coming down on you. Not now. If anybody, if anybody could have been exempt from the judgment of God, it would have been Eli because he was the priest. Uh, he was the guy who represented the people to God and God to the people. But he had failed in his responsibility to do that. And God says you have, uh, you, you have wronged so long. And you have refused to straighten up. And as the old people would say fly right. As a result the judgment of God is coming upon your household. And God said I will see to it. That your priestly line is forever eradicated. And guess what? That was Brother Samuel's first assignment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, 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 he went to sleep. I am sure it was heavy on his heart. Uh -huh. uh, but, 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 but God dealt with him. And, and, and Eli said to him the following day, he said, now, 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 uh, tell me, my son, what the Lord said. I don't leave anything of it out. Yeah. And Samuel just unloaded on Brother Eli the priest. Uh, but the judgment of God, when it comes, all who deserve it will get it. But hallelujah, I want you to know this morning that whatever your situation is, by God's grace, he is able to forgive and forget. Yeah. To cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And make you fit before the throne as though you have never seen. The last thing that I would mention uh, that I learned from the text today is that we as God's people need to position ourselves. We need to be position ourselves to hear from God. Very often, my wife accuses me of being deaf. <laughs> you can't hear. <clears throat> well, you have to know the situation. We live in a house that is acoustically poor. And I will be in two rooms down from her. I heard her said something, but I have no clue what she said. Okay? Where are you going with this, Reverend? Sometimes, watch this now. 
sometimes we as believers yeah. are so busy mm. doing our thing. Mm. We are so preoccupied mm. with things that really don't matter. Mm. Uh, we are we're doing life as though we're the only ones that matter. That God really does not have a chance to get to us. In the midst of a national crisis, in the midst of a community crisis, uh, we need to position ourselves so that God can speak to us. And when he speaks to us, then in turn, we need to relay the message. First of all, the word of God admonishes us that we need to stand still and see God's salvation. What does that mean? Quit what you're doing. Quit running your race. Uh, quit being preoccupied with stuff over which you have no control whatsoever. And just stand still. Stop dead in your tracks. And say, God, I want to hear from you today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, my question for me was this. Uh, then, 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 then how can I do that? The word of God admonishes two ways in which we can do that. Number one, uh, spend more time in the word of God. And listen, don't only read the word of God when you have to read the word of God. You just, just to find some time when you and God can get just get aside and say, No, Lord, I'm going to read from the Psalms today. Or I'm going to read from the Pentateuch today. Or I'm going to read from the Gospel. I'm going to read from the Epistle today. And what I want you to do is to just speak to me through your word. Forget the spider on the wall. Forget the coffee pot that's brewing. Forget the beans that's cooking. Forget what's ever in the crock pot. Just focus totally and completely upon the word of God and see if God would not speak to you in that hour. Yeah. Then secondly, I would suggest that we need to spend more time on our knees. I, I hear you. Some of you say, well, I can pray while I'm driving. Well, you might be able to, but you got to be watching the car in front of you and the car behind you. What you need to do is simply come to the point in your life where you set aside some time on your knees when every distraction will be removed, every sin will be uh, out of your sight, every, everything will be, and you can focus upon God to see him in all of his glory. It wasn't until Isaiah was able to leave the business of the outside and come into the temple of God and focus upon God where he was able to see God in all of his beauty. Getting in the word of God. Getting on your knees before God. I, I, I ask myself the question, and maybe this would be a good question for you to ask. What if, what if all of the believers in Burlington County, what if all of the believers in the state of New Jersey, what if all of the believers in these United States of America would just lay down all of our prejudices. All of our political opinions. All of the arguments that I have, I, 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 I would just position yourself in a place where God could speak to you. And mm -hmm. not only position yourself in a place where God could speak to you, but with a commitment 
and the commitment would be that you will be willing to do and to say what God says for you to do. Can, can, can you imagine what would happen if all of God's people because you know what he said? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, that means get rid of all of your uh, preconceived whatever and pray. Then I'll hear from heaven. And God said, I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to do a thing that whoever hears it, their ear will sing. Uh, um, <laughs> I wonder if God's getting ready to do a thing today. And the question is, is it judgment or is it mercy? My prayer to God for you is simply this, that you and I will, will, will be so found that when the judgment of God comes, He'll say, well done, yeah, yeah. instead of depart from me. Yeah. Uh, it's time for the people of God to rise up, to position themselves where God can hear, uh, speak to them. And when we hear, listen and do. But I would be amiss in closing if I did not say to you what my mother said to me when I was a little kid. All of what I am saying to you is like throwing water on a duck's back. If you have not been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you would not understand much of what I'm saying. If you need to come into that relationship and you don't know how, let me invite you today. Uh, God still stands with outstretched arms saying, Whosoever will may come. Reach out to us. If I can't help you, I'll find somebody who can help you. And get that most important question settled. So that when the judgment of God comes, uh, you will be protected by the blood and the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for the simplicity yet the power of your word. Thank you for the straightforwardness in which you spoke uh, through Eli, the young man. We pray that your Holy Spirit will speak to our spirits today. If there is someone who needs to come to you in faith, just draw it in as only you can. And then, Lord, take this time of invitation. May that will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you right where you are to stand here, please. And we sing our hymn, our invitation. If you're here this morning and you need to make some kind of a commitment public, I'd be delighted to pray with you, to talk with you, to help you. For those of you who are listening to me uh, via YouTube, I hope you'll reach out to me. And let's get this matter set. It'll be the most important thing you've ever done in your life.
worship time has not come to a close, but God's invitation is always open. If there's a matter you needed to settle and you didn't do it publicly, I trust you'll uh, meet me at the door and let's talk about it before you leave today. In the meantime, remember the Heavenly Father is coming on you to make you look good. My prayer to God for you and for me is simply this, that we let our light so shine before men that they will see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Father, we pray that you will dismiss us from this place, but not from your presence. Go with us, O oh God, to help us to be all that you have intended us to be from the foundation of the world. May our light shine before men so that they'll be drawn to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church